piece by all accounts. I watched it live. Uh, this thing went off without a hitch. It was truly a spectacular and successful blast off, wasn't it? Yeah, it looked good to me. I just watched the video and said, yep, they're going to outer space. Uh, have a good time. <laughs> Talk about what the crew is thinking when they're sitting um, in the craft, they're strapped, they're ready to blast off. What do you think goes through their mind in the moments before the actual launch? Well, luckily these days, whether it's China or Russia or U.S., usually when the astronauts or the Taikonauts or the cosmonauts get into their spaceship, they know they're probably going to launch that day. So they've got three or four hours. They're lying on their back. They're sort of, you know, reading through the little tablets, making sure they know what they're going to do. And there's probably a little pet or a ball hanging. In other words, nothing. They just sort of sit there and wait. And, you know, they've gone through the training a lot, so it's not unfamiliar to them. But they know this time there's going to be a lot of noise. They're going to be pressed back in their seats and they're going down to space. So anticipation, I, I don't know what another word in another language would be, but anticipation is what they're sort of dealing with. Uh, one of the people on board is obviously a lot more experienced, is a veteran. Uh, do you think for the two other um, less experienced uh, um, taikonauts, do you think there's any kind of fear or anxiety? I guess I'm putting myself in that situation. Now, obviously, I have no training, and I'm not an astronaut. Well, I've had a little bit of training. I've done the centrifuges, and so uh, it, it is when you get the G-forces, you, you're paying attention. You know you're going somewhere. I mean, you really are pressed back like this. So that tends to sort of focus most of your attention. And it's quick, and it's sudden, and then it's over. And then suddenly things are floating around the capsule, and you're in space. But it's the moments up to the launch that, yeah, I, I, I think maybe if you and I go on our flight someday, we'll both be looking at each other like, here we go. Yeah, you'll do just fine. I don't know about me. Um, okay, let's talk about some of the experiments. From what I understand, some 86 experiments um, covering various fields, including uh, spacewalks, space life science, microgravity, fundamental physics, space material science, space medicine, new space technologies. I don't know what any of that means. Well, what it means is, first of all, it's familiar because when I worked for NASA, yeah, I was like listing them off. These are the things, the experiments that I had to worry about getting into place and so forth. Uh, what you have now with, uh, with Tiangong is a full-fledged space station that does everything from understanding how life adapts to no gravity in space, to how you use materials, how they behave differently, how chemistry is different in space, how you live and work in space, how you go outside. So in other words, it's from A to Z, they're doing everything that you would do in a modern space station, including, as I heard in the intro piece, thinking about what it will be like to go to the moon and work there. So in terms of preparation, Keith, what goes through, what kind of preparation uh, do these Taikonauts go through? Are we talking about months or perhaps even years? Years. And a lot of it is, uh, it is a lot of training. I joke with my astronaut friends that they can't, you know, go to the supermarket without, a, you know, a checklist. Uh, you get sort of used to that after a while, but there's some things that you train that you learn how to do, how to put the spacesuits on, how to make all the things work in the space station. But then there's all these individual experiments which no one person can keep in their head. And so they use these little tablet devices now and they talk to people on Earth. They've had training how to use the stuff, but... You know, they're always talking to somebody on Earth. They're checking their checklists and so forth. But it's different types of training, and they learn things while they're in space because the schedules may change. They may have to wait an extra week to come home, and they'll add in some other tasks. So it's not unlike going to Antarctica or being on a research special in the ocean. You're always paying attention to schedule and changes in that schedule. How critical are those spacewalks uh, going to be? Well, you know, it's one thing about space stations is you have to put them together. And even if you launch the pieces and they dock, you have to connect cables, things break. You have new experiments that you want to take outside and, you know, hang on the side of the space station so we, they can either look down at the Earth or look up at the, star, the stars. Batteries have to be replaced, all kinds of things. So it's not unlike, again, being on a ship where you go out and scrub the rust off or put something back up after a storm. All right, we'll leave it there. As always, fascinating discussion. Keith Cowing, thank you very much. My pleasure.